Well, hello. Today, I'd like to give you my first impressions of the Waterman Reflex. This is a... Okay, so you can't buy all these amazing, wonderful pens with amazing gold flex nibs all the time. Sometimes you gotta buy the cheap plastic pens. And that's what this is, but it has a little bit going for it. So let's take a look at it. All right, so this is the Waterman Reflex pen. I did turn down the exposure more than I usually do because it, I, it seemed to show the finish better. Uh, so it's, it's got a pretty gnarly finish. I don't know, was gnarly still in use in the 90s when this pen was made? I'm not sure. But we'll look up here. So we've just kind of got a nice sunset type of finish. They called it the fruit design, but I don't know what kind of fruit that is. It looks more like a weirdly stylized uh, octopus. Down here on the barrel, that's a piece of fruit. Like a citrus fruit. That looks like a... Okay, I was going to say like a star fruit, but it doesn't. So I don't know. We've got a Waterman here. Nothing else on the barrel. Obviously injection molded. This isn't one of your expensive pens. Open it up. We have a... What do you even call that nib? It's like a reverse V-nib or something like the old uh, Caveco's had. But it's a medium. I see an M there. Open it up still more. And I have installed a converter previously. It's a cartridge converter pen. So let's ink it up. Of course, a classy Waterman pen deserves some equally classy Parker Quink washable blue. Lots of nice bubbling, which I knew it would because I have cleaned this pen. So I knew that it ran water at least. And it's a fair assumption that if it runs water, it also runs ink. Might have to get a new bottle of this. Oh, no, I don't need to because I was sent a whole bunch of bottles by various fans. I have other fans saying, please stop using Parker Quink Washable Blue. I'm so bored with it. So let's see how the exposure is on paper. Okay, I'm going to try to leave it in, but I had a little involuntary, ooh, when I wrote with this pen first. Uh, that is a remarkably smooth writer. That's not what I expected. So, Parker Quink. Washable blue. Goes without saying probably on this channel, but I'm saying it. Uh, see, we'll test out flex. Of course it's a steel nib. This was never one of their expensive pens. This was uh, one of their cheapies. Uh, wetness and flow. I will say it's punching way above its weight class. I'm impressed. You know, some people may not like a lightweight plastic pen like this, but uh, I'm liking it. Wetness and flow. Smear test. Yeah, it's a wet one. Uh, reverse writing, if you're into that kind of thing. Kind of scratchy, but not impossible to work with. And definitely an extra fine. And finally, the world-famous Pierre Gustafson test. Yes! <laughs> Pass that one with flying colors. One thing I'll note, I just uh, noticed this. It looks like it's a screw cap. Until you actually study those threads and realize that they don't have an angle to them at all. So that must be the mechanism whereby the, the cap is held on. So, 
Yeah, it gives a nice satisfying click when you poke cap it. Put it in front of the microphone here. So that was the Waterman Reflex. Um, plastic pen, just kind of, I don't know, is that screen printed on it? Uh, but as you saw, it's a decent writer. It's, uh, I found in, in my time with it, it was reliable. I believe it, I ran it empty before school ever started, but it, it's, it's the kind of pen you could use as a daily writer. Uh, speaking of which, oh, there's a pen in my pocket, but that's not part of the story. It just happens to be there. Yeah. Passes the pocket test with no problem. And this is a sh thick shirt. So, uh, kudos to Waterman because, uh, not all my pens can pass this test on this shirt. In fact, uh, we'll see what this Schaefer Legacy... Okay, the Schaefer Legacy I'm wearing also passes. But uh, the important thing is, I was happy with this pen. Uh, I'm not going to sing raptures about how wonderfully it writes. It writes adequately. It writes well. Uh, it just doesn't write beautifully. You know, no flex, no, no, nothing amazing, no crazy line variation. But, uh, yeah, I was writing on low-cost paper, um, no problem. I could write on high-quality paper, no problem. It started up right away like a champ, no problem. It just a uh, good, reliable pen. So, if you're interested in the vintage market, don't be afraid of looking at the lower-cost offerings. And vintage... The definition keeps changing because, uh, you know, how far back do we say, oh, that's just a pen that they don't sell anymore, until we say vintage. You know, this Schaefer Legacy 2 from the 1990s is considered vintage by a lot of collectors. I guess that would make it about 30 years old. <laughs> Time passes. Because this pen came out when I was in high school. So this one, uh, I guess this is vintage too. So, uh, anyway, I, uh, hope that was interesting, hope it was useful, and, uh, hope you enjoyed that pen. I've got snow, and it's October the 14th. So, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.